Welcome back to Commercial Finance to Experts Academy. This is Su Chung speaking, and I'm here with David again. Uh, today we're going to talk about more about the mindset, uh, efficiency ratios, and what we do with the commercial side, so that you 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 understand commercial better. Uh, as far as submitting to lenders and all that, uh, why how we differ from residential financing. So on on the commercial side, we don't have an issue with efficiency ratio as much as it is on the residential side. Uh, I know that if, uh, if for one of you do the old technique when you're a new broker, you send a file to and you sort of like throw it on the wall as many lenders as you can, see if one of them would stick, right? Or how would that affect you on the residential side? Um, uh, as a brand new broker, I did exactly <laughs> that. Um, I didn't understand how the system worked in my first couple of deals and I would submit on the residential side to two or three different broker channel lenders. Um, so my efficiency ratio was at best 33%. Wow. Um, or at worst zero if none of them approved the file. Um, so I was quickly uh, had a chat with my managing broker. Or he had a chat with me mm -hmm. <laughs> about that. Uh, once they kind of figured out what was going on. So that was one of my early oops. So it wasn't a good chat, it was a great no, it was, chat. Well, it was a great chat. It, he set me straight very quickly. Yeah. Um, and it was just being new and not entirely understanding that lenders actually kept track of efficiency ratios uh -huh. so that they okay. cared about how many files they underwrote versus how many they funded. Well, um, as much as I like to tell you that we don't have an efficiency ratio on the commercial side, there sort of is. It's sort of one of those unwritten rules. Yes. Okay. And here's what I mean. If you were, say, one of the account manager, commercial account manager that I've forwarded a dozen deals to, and yet none of them have stuck because you reply back to me and give me a discussion letter or some kind of pre-approval that, that I didn't really like or my client didn't really like. So now you've done a, a dozen deals with me. I'm sending you a 13th deal. How, how you can uh, perceive my uh, loan request, David? Um, None of them would ever actually admit to it, but I think my emails could end up in <laughs> junk. Uh, my phone voicemails could end up not being ever retrieved. Yeah. Um, so yeah, commercial lenders don't have official efficiency ratios like our residential lenders do. But if you keep sending files to a commercial lender and they give you a discussion paper back yeah. and they get nothing but crickets from you, um, at a certain point, they're going to forget who you are. That's right. That's right. Um, but it's also understood in the commercial field that they realize that they're likely not the only commercial lender that's given the opportunity to look at a particular. That's deal. right. And they expect a certain degree of of files not ultimately filed. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the one bonus, and you know the caveat is is that you do need to send them something that they can do and yes. eventually commit to. You know, maybe once out of a few files, it, 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 wouldn't, it wouldn't hurt. But if you keep doing that, like, like David said, crickets will happen. And chances are, they'll re respond to you right near subject removal date. Even though a commercial side subject removal date can be a month or two months away. Yep. So you don't really want them to put your file to the bottom, right? My files tend to go on the top just because it's a complete file. And when we submit to them, I already know ahead of them, this is a strong deal that they probably can come back with a strong reply yes right and that's it, that comes with experience mind you so uh, I believe the the other things that we need to discuss about too is that uh, yes uh, if you do happen to get half a dozen deals from me and none of them have have come to any fruition how do you resolve that issue from not being uh, taken seriously and be basically avoid hearing from from the, the lender you submitted right. you to them. It's anytime I've, I've had a situation where you know I've gotten more than one um, approval or discussion document back from various lenders. Uh, once the clients have made their decision as to which lender they want to move forward with, um, once we're fairly far down that road, I'll go back to the other lender and explain to them that the, the clients have chosen to work with lender B or lender C as opposed to them. Um, and I'll give them some information as to where the client's mindset was, whether yeah. it's interest rate, whether it's loan to value, uh, whether it's fees. Fees is a big one. Yeah. Um, a lot of times we'll get interest rates that are within tenths, you know, yeah. 10 bips of each other, um, loan to values that are right on, but one has a total of 
you know, maybe four or five thousand dollars in fees over a couple mm. of years versus a thousand or fifteen hundred dollars. Yeah. And even though we're dealing in you know large six and sometimes seven figure mortgages, um, the client is going to perceive an extra four thousand dollars in fees over a couple of years as being a deal breaker. Yeah. So compare that to the residential channel. So the commercial account managers from the other lenders would would be open to competing for the business, even though you came back to them that they need to come up to come Absolutely. up to that. Absolutely, yeah. Right? It's um, if I've got a lender that um, I had a deal here just a few months ago where I had two different lenders provide me with discussion papers, yeah. and one of them had low interest rate, lower interest rate than the other, but their fees were triple mm -hmm. what the other deal was. So they were trying to make some money back, That's you know, right. low interest. One way or another. Fees. Whereas the other lender had a little higher interest but much lower fees. Right. And I actually used that in discussing with both lenders. I said, look, yeah. we love your interest rate, but the fees are, are going to be a deal breaker. We can't, I can't sell these fees. That's right. Um, to see if there was any movement on the fees. And with the other lender, I had a discussion, you know, I love your fees. The fees are great, but your interest rate's completely out. You're, you know, X percent out of the running. So let me ask you, if you had some, some really good file in, on, on the residential broker channel. Could you go to First National and ask TD to complete or Scotia to compete? Not really. <laughs> <laughs> it's, um, that was one of the big things, my big aha moments in learning commercial. They'll probably tell you where to go, right? Yeah, it's, you know, on the residential side, you're pretty much stuck with, with what their posted rates are gonna yeah. be, what their, what their rates are. Yeah. Um, whereas on the commercial side, rates are completely negotiable. And how does that make you feel? Does it make you feel you're actually doing a great job because you actually have, have, have yourself uh, more personal power? Absolutely, then? yeah. It's, I'm able to, to show my value um, of my service and my experience to my clients much easier on commercial versus residential. Yeah. Um, you know, Residential, typically the client isn't writing me a check and on the commercial side they are, yeah. um, but they're not gonna be happy about writing that check if I haven't proven to them my value. Yeah. So on the residential side, you feel like you're at mercy of the lender, whereas on the commercial side, you're like, come, come and play ball. As long as no residential lenders are watching this video, yes, I feel like <laughs> it's completely. It's different. all good. It's every. It's a different industry, different They're space. Completely so. different. Which took me a long time to wrap my head around the fact that they are completely different skill sets. That's right. Uh, between residential and commercial. Yeah. So see, earn your earn your value, earn your pay. Yes. Correct? Very awesome. Have yourself a great day, guys. See you in the next video.